afternoon, Ralph. Good afternoon. Um, we'll start, if we may, with, with last, night's, last night's Champions League games. Some, some fascinating ties um, and some big decisions which went down to VAR, which is obviously being implemented into the Premier League next season. What did you make to the decisions last night and, and what unfolded? I think uh, I don't expect too much justice of the VAR. I think uh, I have experience from one year in the Bundesliga and it was the first year and we had a lot of problems in the beginning. Uh, it's still a human decision that is taken, maybe on one level higher then. I think uh, the most important thing is that um, everybody should always know what it is about. Uh, what they are discussing, uh, what is the decision they are proving or, or they want to look at once again. And then uh, it's important that this decision is taken in the stadium, not outside everywhere, or somewhere else uh, 300 miles away. Because the guys or the supporters that come in the stadium, they want to see something what is decided in the stadium. And that's the most important thing. And then I say... It's important that the referee is the guy who is looking at once again on the situation and then he decides. He knows the atmosphere, he knows what is it about, he knows was it a big uh, mistake he made or not, and then he can decide if he wants to change it once again or not. But I think the VAR um, has a lot of uh, challenges to stand. Um, it's easier if it's about offside or not, then you can take the line and it's about two or three inches and it's not possible somebody sometimes for for a, um, a linesman to see if it is offside or onside but uh, for example a foul or hand in the, in, the, in the box it's always a decision that is taken by by a referee and it's not so easy you, can, you will not be 100% sure if it's uh, right or wrong you have one season of the technology when you're at Leipzig what advice would you give to the Premier League? What is important that they get right when VAR is introduced next season? That the last decision the referee has to take. That must be a crucial thing, I think. And uh, because he at first saw the scene and decided penalty or not, for example, and if he think it was a big mistake, then he can he can uh, over over overturn himself, but. That's the most important thing, and that everybody knows what is it about, and does, does, that it doesn't take too long, too much time. I think if it's 30 seconds or one minute, it's okay, but if it takes two or three minutes, the, the crowd will get angry about that, and, and that kills the atmosphere in the stadium. On to Southampton. Um, a brilliant performance against Manchester United at Old Trafford, and an important three points against Fulham, which lifted you out of the bottom three. Is that set? the mood and the tone around the training ground as, as one of positivity as you approach these final nine games of the season? Uh, if you want to compare these two games, it's not so easy. In one game we took points and the other we didn't. And that's finally the only thing that is interesting for me. I know that we didn't, or that we haven't played so bad in, in Old Trafford, that's, that's for sure. If you see yesterday in what momentum this team is in the moment, uh, then you can maybe imagine how big the performance was. But finally, uh, we only took them to the limit and made them yeah, give everything they have to win against us, but they won and uh, we lost. And uh, I think that's always something as a manager you, you don't like to do. You don't like to lose points, you don't like to, uh, to lose the game. And what what I can see, say is, um, and that shows also the, the Champions League, that these top teams, these English top teams, are in really fantastic um, shape and, and they are really in the moment, uh, they show that the Premier League is the best league in the world in the moment. Uh, the yesterday evening showed that Man United, um, although they lost at home 2-0 against PSG, they are still performing outrageous uh, in the in the moment they needed. Okay, they were they didn't have a lot of ball possession, but they they were very very clinical, and I think that's something we also um, we made this experience in, in in the Premier League that if you want to to take something against this team, everybody everything has to be perfect, and that's the same what we are facing now on the weekend. Tottenham, um, you all know this this manager. He is working there. Uh, it's it's um, 
I think uh, outstanding to see um, that what what he built of this team and of this club. I think uh, um, he created quality without spending huge money, um, and I think uh, that's a way that shows how much quality this manager has. And uh, um, I think um, if you see the performance of, of, of this, this team, they always play the perfect pass in the perfect moment. They find exactly the space you, you give them. And uh, to defend such a team or to play against such a team, it's absolutely very, very difficult for, for a team like we are. And uh, that means the preparing for such a game, or if you if you watch this opponent, there's so much quality you see, and that that's the perfect example. If if technical quality meets tactical performance, so I think that's that's a fantastic job my, this manager does in 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 Tottenham, and and um, it would be a very very interesting game on the weekend. And obviously now you have the challenge to try and find a way to, to beat this team that are doing so well in the Champions League and, and operating at the highest level in the Premier League. How, how do you do that? Yeah, I think um, we, we showed against um, Man United if we, if we find a good balance and the right pressing line, uh, then we also can create a few problems for the big teams. Um, it's normal that it's not possible uh, for 95 minutes, uh, don't give them a chance. So <laughs> uh, you can't defend everything. But um, we showed that we, we have the quality to win balls, we have the quality to set counterattacks, to score against these big teams also. And that's what we have to do in the weekend. Eh? To Give them the biggest fight we can we can we can imagine, and uh, with um, a team that is very good, committed, and um, knows exactly what to do. A quick word on on obviously Harry Kane. He's you know a huge part of Tottenham, and he's been scoring goals in the Premier League for for years and years now. How do you defensively set up and, and try to stop a player with such quality? I think he is not only the guy who is scoring in front. He shows that he moves sometimes out of the first line, or, or it comes a little bit deeper. It gets the balls, develop the game. So he's more than only a, a, a finisher, I think. Uh, and sometimes he gets reduced to only this, this strength. Uh, he is a very, very uh, good baggage uh, of, a, of a attacking player. And uh, if he has a chance, yeah, you saw it on, on, on Tuesday in the evening, then it's a goal. And uh, so, uh, but I think this team showed uh, when Kane was injured that uh, they still were successful. And that means Tottenham is not only keen, it's, it's more than this. Eh? And, and uh, that makes it so difficult. Quick word on the Southampton team. You, you said you'd hope Danny Ings would be back in contention. Is he back to full training and is he available for the weekend? No, uh, he's not uh, in the group in the moment. Um, we didn't take any risk. Uh, we want to um, give him the time to come back in this three weeks break we have after the Tottenham game. We have won a friendly game against uh, a championship team and then uh, maybe he got 45 or minutes like that and to build him up uh, for the games that are coming up then and uh, they are very important then yeah. and finally for me after this weekend you've got three weeks off international break and your game with Watford's been postponed because of FA Cup stuff what are you going to do in this time how are you going to utilize this because this is a, a long period of time at a very crucial stage of the season to have without professional competitive matches? Yeah, I think this situation is something new for me because um, um, missing a, a Premier League game or a, a league game because of a cup game uh, is something completely new, um, new experience for me and to have such a long break during the season is unnatural, I think. Uh, a little bit crazy, uh, but uh, yeah, we have to handle it. We, we must uh, take the time um, Okay, the first week we have the 
all the players here. The next in the next two weeks they are gone to the national uh, the international games, so the the training is also not so easy because you cannot prepare anything or, or work on anything. The first week we will take maybe to 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 find a few first steps to the Brighton game, but then it's two weeks off and they are going to the national team and if they come back, maybe they have forgotten everything and then we start it again. So. <laughs> It doesn't really make sense. I don't know. Uh, we will we will find something to to keep ourselves in the rhythm, but it's not easy. Cool. Ralph, looks like Mauricio's banned from the touchline. Has that ever happened to you? Have you come up against a manager? Has it happened to you? What effect does it have? Yes, I also got banned at the end of the game. I think uh, one or two times uh, when I was. Uh, Discussing some things, um, you know, but normally I'm I'm I try to be very respectful to the referees uh, because I only w also want to be uh, want to, to to get the respect from them, and that's normally not a problem for me. Sometimes in a very emotional situation, it can be that that um, you go a little bit too far, but uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, I also step to to the referees after the games and discuss with them or tell them what it's my opinion in a, in, in a respectful way. I think that must always be possible for every manager uh, because uh, that's that's uh, normal, I think. And and uh, I don't know what happened or what he said or why, why this happens. But when you can't be in the technical area, when you can't be on the touchline, how much tougher does that make your job? I don't know if it's uh, for him now a big disadvantage because he can sta sit on the stands. Uh, I, f I know that he can have his headphone now on, so he's always in touch with uh, with with his uh, stuff down downstairs, and he has a very good view on the pitch. <laughs> That's not really a disadvantage, I think. Um, and in the halftime, and I think before the game, you can be in the dress room. So. Um, I think they have changed it uh, because at first it didn't have to be part of, of, of the team and, and are not allowed to go in the dress room, are not allowed to speak with the, with the people on the bench. So they changed this and so now I think it's not such a big disadvantage. You were up in the stands at Wembley on the day you signed here when, when Southampton played Spurs. What were your, what were your first impressions? Were you, did, were you able to take emotion out of it, or did you look at it and think, "Blimey, there's a lot to do here"? Or were you suddenly surprised? I don't know. It is a long time ago. <laughs> no, I think it was um, not a very good game from us uh, against a very good team. Um, and um, what I expected was that uh, we have a lot of uh, things to do, and and. Uh, but I think that was not the team we have to to take as a level where we can compete in the next time. So it's 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 a top six club in in, in England, and so it is it's. But there was t t too big difference between these two teams. So it was it was not that. Like, well, I was shocked or something like that because I, I know that that's a Tottenham is a, is a really really tough and really good opponent. In the last home game, the, the Fulham game, there was this wonderful moment caught on camera when. Nathan Redmond hadn't scored, but he celebrated a goal like he had. He was punching the air like mad, which suggests it's that, that team ethos that you've spoken about. How, how much has that evolved in your time here, that, that everyone is gunning just for the team first rather than personal glory? I think that's a part that I'm always focused very much as a manager, I think, because uh, there and that's the basic, that's the fundament on which you have to build up everything else, like tactical performance, like uh, your training sessions or something like that. It's important that um, the group comes here in the morning, uh, they feel comfortable if they're going in the dress room. There is discipline, there, is, uh, there are um, rules they have to face, and uh, that builds up a good uh, time together, I think. and, and um, I'm a manager who tries to be respectful, but also very demanding. They know exactly what they have to show me, and if they don't do, I criticize every everyone in my team, uh, from the best player in the moment until or to the to the last in the last row. Everybody hears what is good and what is not good, and because I want to make everybody better, and every player, I think, appreciates that. And um, I had this week's 
also um, personal meetings for example with the goalkeepers and because I make I make a change there and they have to know why I did it and they have to know what I want to see more from everybody and and uh, that's how I want to create something like like a community that is really focused in one direction and uh, I hope it's the right direction because uh, there's still a very very tough way to go and uh, that's how I always try to work body language was something you spoke to Nathan about particularly wasn't it was it the toilet position you <laughs> It's something we we sometimes um, it's it's more a um, a typical position if you if you should attack but you don't because you're waiting eh? and that means <laughs> yeah you should attack but sometimes you are waiting on the toilet you know <laughs> that's maybe the reason why we 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 took this this uh, symbol yeah. <laughs>